So what is cultural competence? There are many and varied definitions of this and some people do have issue with it because we work in a competency environment. Cultural competence is not something that can be ticked off as being competent. It's something that is lifelong and evolves. And the four main components of cultural competence are the following. So if you're going to be somebody who is culturally competent, the first thing you need to be aware of is your own world view. You need to know where you come from, why you think the way you do, and ask yourself, where does this come from? It comes from your parents, your schooling, your spirituality, your friends, your children, your partners, and your workplace. It comes from a very um, varied area of your life. The next one is knowledge and attitude. So do you have knowledge of cultural diversity? Do you understand people from other cultures? And how do you gain understanding of other cultures? Is it by asking questions about people who come from other cultures? The other one is acceptance. I mean, you don't have to love everything that's culturally different from your own, but what you do have to do as a health professional is to respect other people's cultures and suspend your judgment until you fully understand a culturally diverse situation. The fourth component of cultural competence is communication skills. Many cultures have different ways of communicating, not only with the spoken word, but with facial gestures, um, with body language, with smiling, with frowning, with shaking of the head. And many people get confused, not just because of the actual spoken word or the accent that a person might have, but also the body language. So when you have a student who's displaying um, unfamiliar behaviours of communication, then it's a really good idea to ask that person respectfully what their communication indicators mean, what does their body language mean, and how important is it to that mode of communication.